Hi guys, Alice in Wonderland here. I am coming to you today a little bit stressed and anxious and overwhelmed and sad and depressed. And I figured this was a better time than any to share with you a new series that I've been working on for quite a while, been thinking about for a while and haven't yet released it, but now is as good a time as any. Um, the series is going to be called When I Think About You, I Touch My Blank, and it's going to be an entire series of mostly massage techniques that you can use on yourself for when you can't or are for whatever reason not able to get to a massage therapist or a chiropractor or a some sort of bodywork healer. These are all techniques that you can do yourself and hopefully uh, will give you some sort of relief because I know myself included, not everybody can get to a healer or a body worker on a regular basis. So these techniques are going to show you how to uh, disconnect from other people's energy, release that energy, send it back to them, as well as call back your own energy. And uh, this this is just simply laying on crystals on your body uh, to help connect to their energy. But this is something that you can do with things that hopefully you can find around your house and is quick and easy. Um, this is the so this is the first episode of when I think about you I touch my crystals. It's just been one of those days that is over, I'm feeling overwhelmed in my life. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a massage therapist. So I, um, it's been really heavy days for my clients as well. So it's just kind of like piled on and piled on. And these are uh, some techniques that I should be doing every day as a regular practice. Um, but I don't and honestly like I know that that's why things have been piling up and piling up and that's why I'm feeling overwhelmed. So here I am. I'm sweaty. No makeup. Just finished with work and um, I'm just gonna they're just gonna walk you through these techniques. So anybody can be doing this with any crystals that they have. I am specifically going to be using nine crystals because I work with nine chakras in the body. Most chakra images and or chakra stone sets that you will find in most stores or online uh, will look exactly like this one with seven chakras, the red one being at the base of the spine and the purple one being at the top of the head. However, I prefer to use an image like this one that depicts nine chakras and from this image here you can see that there is a brown flower added below the red chakra or root chakra and the seed of life or flower of life above the crown chakra. You might have a set of seven. It's really easy to find any metaphysical shop that you might go to is probably going to have a set of seven chakra stones. Um, so you can use this. If you don't have seven chakra stones, you can use simply clear quartz. Any crystal you have, you can use rocks that you have uh, found on the beach or seashells that you found on the beach. That anything that's going to tap you into that earth energy. Obviously, specific crystals are going to help for specific things, and that's why we want specific crystals. But this is something that you can do with things that hopefully you can find around your house. And okay, so before we start here, I'm just going to select nine crystals um, from my massage collection here and um, work with those. So when you're trying to work with the chakras, rem remember Rory G. Biv, the colors of the rainbow, so red, orange, yellow, green, 
deep bit blue <laughs> indigo violet and if if you're struggling to find all of those colors you can um for red for the root chakra you can also use black stone uh for the heart chakra you can use pink or green and for the upper chakras like some people use like a sky blue for the throat um but if you have a darker blue like lapidolite that works well for the throat as well and then again lapidolite can be used for your third eye energy. I like to use blue kyanite for the third eye, which is also a lighter blue that could also be used for the throat chakra. So like you don't have to be too particular or crazy with this. And then of course if you know that your specific stones are good for a particular chakra and they're not the right color, like it doesn't matter. I'm just I'm just telling you basic <laughs> basic chakra stones are Roy G. Biv. Um, some people use clear for, um, for the crown. Some people use violet for the crown. So it's really up to you. Um, because I'm doing nine chakras, I use clear, clear for the soul star. And then I use violet um, amethyst for the crown. Um, and then, like I said, I like to use blue kyanite for the third eye. I usually put both pink and green on, on the heart chakra. This is, um, rose quartz and green fluorite, but I mean, you could also do, like, I also have green malachite. Malachite can also be used on the sacral chakra. Um, so <laughs> you know what crystals you have and you know why you bought them, and if you don't, then you probably had some little little card that goes along with it. Um, so I am going to pick out, let's see, I like to use black for the earth star. So this could, black stones could be used for root or root or earth star. I'm going to use a garnet, which in this image probably looks brown, but this is, it, garnet is red, like a really, really dark red. So I'm going to use these two garnet stones for the root chakra. I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I have um, carnelian that I could use for the sacral chakra, but I think I'm going to use this uh, orange orchid. This is orchid calcite. So it's um, orange calcite. So red, orange, yellow. I'm using um, golden healer quartz. Green, yeah, I, I definitely feel like I need a lot of <laughs> energy, but I'm using uh, pink and green for my for my heart chakra, because um, that's where I'm feeling most of the blockage, congestion, um, heaviness is in my heart chakra. Um, so let's do lapis lazuli for, did I call this lapidolite earlier? My bad. Um, let's use lapis lazuli for the throat and I like blue kyanite for the third eye and we're going to do amethyst for the crown and I don't know I might I think I might want to do I'm gonna do selenite for the soul star and I have I have some selenite palm stones that are about this size so I'm gonna grab one of those I have it in my other bag <laughs> So these are the crystals that I ended up with just to show you a full layout um, from Earth Star to Soul Star. At the base I use the so Snowflake Obsidian. So Obsidian in general is uh, a volcanic glass that I find really connects you to the Earth Star Chakra because it is like created deep within the earth and then um, uh, a, vol a, a volcano erupts and then it creates this obsidian glass. So I just feel like that is a really great way to connect to uh, deep within the earth's energy. And um, like I said, you can use other black stones as well. And then moving up to the root, I really like to use garnet because of its red color. It, uh, where I live, we have red clay 
uh, like my entire backyard is just red clay. So it that really helps me connect to earth energy. I also find that it's a little bit gentler for a root chakra stone and even kind of find a little bit of a connection to the heart chakra. But that is just my personal perspective. That is not something that like I you normally research about garnet, but that's just in my experience working with it. It's I feel like it has a little bit of a heart chakra relation, relation too, which is good for me because I struggle with getting grounded and that helps me to gently get grounded whereas black stones are sometimes very abrupt in their in their grounding process. They they strip away the negative energy and they pull you right right into center and into the earth and it's a little abrupt sometimes. So <laughs> So moving up to the sacral chakra, I am using orchid calcite, which is a combination of a couple of stones, mostly orange calcite, which is really wonderful as a sacral chakra stone, and black tourmaline. So this is going to ground you and uh, activate your sacral chakra as well. Moving up from the sacral chakra, we go to the solar plexus chakra, and this is my absolute if I had to, if I had to choose a favorite crystal, this is it. Golden Healer Quartz is among one of my favorite crystals. I'm going to do a whole entire episode just on the Golden Healer Quartz, so more information on that to come. But obviously, it uh, is healing due to its name. So it is yellow and obviously associated with the solar plexus, the color of the sun, and um, also healing as well. And then uh, moving up to the heart. I am using both pink and green colors, green fluorite and rose quartz, which are well known to be heart chakra and heart centered stones. Uh, I love rose quartz for its specific uh, self love and self healing energy. And I just love the combination of pink and green together. You could certainly just use one green stone or one pink stone. And moving up from the beautiful rose quartz and self-love energy, we get to the throat chakra. So I misspoke earlier in the video. This is lapis lazuli. You can tell because it has gold specks of pyrite in it. This amazing stone can be used for a great many things, but one of them I find that it gives you the confidence to speak your truth. So all of the kyanites are going to be good for cleansing and clearing energy. Specifically, black kyanite is known for removing uh, energy blockages and negative energy. Uh, so we associate the blue one with the third eye or the throat chakra interchangeably. And I just really like it for the third eye because I feel like uh, most of us do have blockages there. Uh, and this helps to clear that energy out as well as bring in that beautiful blue indigo color. And then we move up from here to the crown chakra and most people's first introduction to stones is very commonly amethyst. All of us love the beautiful purple color, uh, violet color. It is associated with the crown chakra and I don't really stray far from this. I use different versions of amethyst for the crown chakra, but it's just my number one crown chakra. And then at the very end here, these are the palm stones that I was talking about, uh, the selenite palm stones. Uh, selenite is uh, an overall wonderful cl for clearing all of the chakras. It brings in this white light and uh, clears everything out of your system. But I really like it as a connection to the soul star chakra as well. Okay, so a couple of things that I um, am also going to use. Uh, are some, uh, these are some little mini vogels. So these are the mini vogels that I'm talking about in this clip. And as you can see, the top of it is a little wider than the bottom of it. In this case, the wider end is the receiving end and the smaller end is the pointed end. So the receiving end absorbs energy and the pointing end uh, projects or distributes energy. Um, you can also use just regular crystal points. And um, as you can see, my little friend here <laughs> is helping us out. 
So basically what I'm doing in this clip is moving the crystals over to the yellow portion of the mat there or the carpet that I'm sitting on just so that you can the camera can pick them up a little bit easier. So you can do this on whatever surface you are lying on and I'm just simply lining them up in chakra order all the way from the root to the crown or the earth star to the soul star. And once I have everything lined up, I just try to kind of estimate like where my body will be positioned in relation to the crystals. That way they're easy to reach while I'm lying down. Um, I have had this particular carpet or mat for over a decade, probably closer to two decades now. And I know exactly like where my body fits. So where Odin is laying here, I know that my head goes up here. So I'm going to put the, um, the selenite ones up there and she's going to move them for me probably. I'm saving these two points for my hands and that is because we are going to be uh, releasing through my right hand and receiving through my left hand. All of us have a receiving hand and a projecting hand. It is usually, usually your projecting hand is your dominant hand and for this, it, for me, it is my right hand. Um, and my non-dominant hand is my left hand, so that is my receiving hand. So hopefully you can tell from this image, in my right hand I have the point pointing outwards away from me in my right hand because this is my projecting hand. I am releasing, so I'm pointing the energy away from my right hand. In my left hand, the crystal is pointed with the point facing inwards, and the wider hand is on, or the wider point of the crystal is on the outside because that is going to be receiving energy from the universe, or in this case, I'm calling back my energy. So the left hand is receiving and pointing the energy in towards myself. So you can do this with any quartz-based minerals because quartz is going to project, amplify uh, energy. So you can do this with any quartz-based mineral. This is a specifically smoky quartz because I like it for its cleansing energy or cleansing properties as well. Uh, and um, you can also do this with any quartz point, meaning just a, reg a regular old clear quartz point will work for this as well. You don't have to have a Vogel to do this. If this is the case and you are working with just a regular quartz point, you would still do the same concept of pointing one away from you and one towards you. The one away from you is projecting and releasing and the one pointing towards you is calling in. I like these small crystals too because they're easy to carry around with you. I keep them in a little box in my car and I use them before and after clients and I also use it as a regular nightly routine to release energy and call back my own. Um. So I place one of these on either side so that I'm able to grab it um, when, I, when I'm ready to lay down. And I'm going to place the black obsidian, this is actually snowflake obsidian, down by my feet. I'm just placing it like my foot will be up like this and I'm just placing this, the crystal uh, like right where my heel would be sitting. I place those there where my feet is going to be. I'm just going to move the microphone up so that you can hear me better. Okay, so I'm placing the root on on like the top of my thighs. Sacral on my sacral. Solar plexus there. Heart right there. And you want to have already maybe started uh, paying attention to your breathing. I'm just gonna remove, remove my glasses. Um, so now I want to put <laughs> the selenite back where it was. 
The crown I place around my head on either side of my ears. And then I place um, the throat and the third eye. And then I have my crystal points right next to me. And I'm just going to like start focusing on my breathing here. Get settled in, feel the floor against my back, against the back of my calves, against the back of my thighs back of my hips. I like roll my shoulders a little bit, like adjust them so that I'm just like sinking into the floor. I can even feel like right now, like my shoulders are rolled forward. So I'm really like paying attention to rolling them back and you might need to readjust because like my shoulders like weren't even really <laughs> touching the <laughs> touching the, the floor before. And I focus like the back of my hands are just touching the floor. And I just try to melt in and take a few deep breaths. Um, uh, my, my breathing is particularly, I mean, obviously I think it's because I'm talking, but it is also because I have like um, tension, like we hold, we hold tension in our chest and it, it inhibits the way we breathe, so. <laughs> So one of my favorite breathing techniques is just to breathe in, um, like just take a deep breath, hold it, and exhale. And hopefully, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you should be able to feel when you're holding the breath, you should feel tension. And then when you let go, you should feel it release. So I'm gonna take another deep breath in and hold it and then release it. It doesn't take me long at all to realize how badly I really needed this. I was kind of going back and forth in my head whether or not I should keep talking on camera or wait and do a voiceover. And you just really start to feel your muscles relax. I know the setup and everything looked kind of awkward, but that was mainly because I was struggling to try to get everything on camera and have everything set up like in the moment. Um, but this really is something quick and easy that anybody can do. And then it's up to you how long you want to set your timer for. And I don't know if this is, this is the ASMR mic that we are using. Um, so I'm hoping it just picked up, I had some stomach gurgling noises and um, it's, it's really funny because people get really embarrassed by stomach gurgling noises during their massage and this is actually a really good sign. It means that you have, that your brain has switched from fight or flight or the stress mode and gone into rest and digest mode. Um, so it's just really funny. You always have people be like, I don't, I ate, I specifically ate before I came. I don't know why my stomach is gurgling and it's, I'm not hungry. And, <laughs> and it's just, it, it's a good sign. It's a good sound. I, I take gurgling noises and snoring <laughs> and drooling <laughs> as, as compliments. So um, the fact that my stomach is gurgling means that I have entered the rest and digest mode, which means my brain has switched off the, <laughs> the stress producing hormones and is hopefully going to be relaxing. Um, so when I get to this place, I just continue to focus on my breathing and I scan my body. I'll scan it. Um, like from the feet up and then um, 
I just kind of see where I'm holding tension. Yes, mommy needs help, doesn't she? <laughs> Are you marked in your territory? Um, it might be that I was I was pet sitting this week and today this morning was the last morning. So I think she's like, you've got somebody else's smells on you. So I scan my body, starting one from my feet. I notice how my feet are feeling. I just um, pay attention to them, do a full body scan. I might wiggle them a little bit. Uh, you might hear some cracking, uh, you can flex and point your toes a few times, or you might want to do some circles, and then I just continue to focus on my breathing, go up my calves, focus on my calves, relaxing my calves, my knees, relax my thighs and then I try to see like if I can feel the weight of all of the different stones so at this point I'm really starting to zone out I <laughs> I try to I think I come back on uh, speaking a little bit and then I just finally eventually give up uh, so I've sped up the process a little bit here um, you can take as long as you want to do the body scan however long it takes for you I focus on my sacral chakra and imagine that roots are really like connecting into the earth where I'm feeling my body touching the ground. And away we go. <laughs> uh, it did not, like I needed this crystal healing session so incredibly <laughs> much. It, if it weren't for the sake of setting up the video, trying to record, trying to speak while I was doing this whole process, it really would not have taken that long. Um, I don't know if you can hear in the background earlier, my phone was going off like crazy, and I was just like, all I want to do is just lay down and de-stress for five minutes. So you can, you can set your alarm for however long you want to. I think I set mine for 20 minutes because I, I mean, I was desperate. I was at the end of the rope and, and I was at the, at the point where I would normally reach for alcohol or sugar or some sort of negative comfort thing that wasn't going to fill my cup back up. It wasn't going to make me feel better. It might temporarily numb or pause what I was feeling. Um, but it, as soon as you, you know, put down the bottle or put down the cookie, it's going to cut. The stress is always there. The stress is going to come back. This 20 minutes gave me peace of mind. The crystals just do their work. They work their magic. You can do, you can do this for five minutes. If you get a little chakra crystal set and have it like setting next to your bed on your nightstand, you can do this while you're sleeping at night. You can place the crystals on your, on yourself while you're lying in bed. You can set a timer for five minutes or however long you want to do it for just so that you are, you know, not dropping the crystals on the floor when you roll over if you fall asleep and all of that sort of things. I like to keep little medicine bag pouches, like little drawstring pouches that I seem to have a plethora of or the little organza bags like... Uh, the candles that I still come in, you can have that like uh, to sleep with in your bed just so that you know, the crystals are all contained. Um, if you have any like wands, I tend to sleep with wands. I know that's like a weird thing to say or palm stones just because they fit in your hand nicely. And I, I like to like uh, hold them in my hand when I meditate. Um, and you can do this while you're sleeping. I mean, why not? Like, you're, hopefully you're sleeping between six to eight hours a night and that's six to eight hours that you could be doing crystal healing. Um, but this was definitely something that I need to do on a regular basis. Um, I certainly do it every once in a while, but it's, it's silly not to. It's so easy. 
And not to make this video too technical or anything because the point of this is to something quick and easy that you can do on your own. You don't have to be a certified crystal healer. You don't have to be a Reiki practitioner. You don't have to be a massage therapist. Anybody can just place stones on their body. Um, and not to get too technical, but how this works is the our energetic system mingles with the energetic system of the crystal and and the the crystal has completely perfect sacred geometric structure so by putting that sacred that perfect sacred geometry structure within your energetic field your energetic field will begin to try to mimic that same design and then of course all of the different properties of the crystals are going to be working their magic um, on you as well and that is simply not anything that i can explain there's certainly been scientific studies on it but if you've watched my uh, let's get stoned videos like if you sit and meditate with a crystal um, you tend to pick up intuitive intuitive hits on it and the only way that I can prove that to you is if you try it for yourself. I've done it for myself. I, I can't deny that the thoughts that I have when I'm meditating with crystals that come up and then I do research and end up discovering that that crystal has those properties um, without even researching beforehand. Um, it, I mean, it's phenomenal. Like you, you can't make this stuff up. It's, it's, you always wonder like, what, where do they, <laughs> who, who decided that this crystal is for this? And I don't know who that person was, but, um, that's why I like to see for myself, uh, what energy I pick up on it, what intuitive hits I pick on it. And it's, it's usually accurate compared to the research of the crystal energy. So uh, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> um, you, we'll see how I come out of this. Uh, totally a different person than who I was when I started filming this video. And I mean, I think uh, I think the evidence speaks for itself. Uh, I don't know. You tell me in the comments below. So yeah, comment below if you believe in crystal magic and crystal healing. And also clap three times if you believe in fairies. <laughs> Alexa, stop. So now I am feeling so much more calm, relaxed, um, and I just wanted to show you what I was doing in my hands. But anyways, so you can do this with um, just regular crystal points if you would like. Um, and uh, so while I was laying there, after I finished scanning my body, I was just laying there with my palms open with one point pointing out, one point pointing in, and I would just envision releasing any energy that is mine. And I would just envision wherever I felt like that energy was, I envisioned it coming up, going down my arm and out through the crystal. And I always say that I send it back to them in the form that it was sent to me or that I picked it up. Um, sometimes I'll say that I send it back uh, with love and light or in the most positive form. However, you can just simply send it in the form that it was received. That way you are not shifting that energy for them. It's simply giving their energy back to them. So I envision all of the energy just coming out of my arm, down my hand, and out through the crystal. And I at least say it three times within my mind. I release any energy that is not mine. I disconnect from any energy that's not mine. I release any, whatever word or phrase works for you. I let go of any energy that's not mine. 
and um, once I feel like I'm done with that, then I call back my energy through the other arm and imagine that it is being cleansed and cleared through the, the crystal and I call it back. There. And you just feel more refreshed, <laughs> more um, alert, like I was ready to go to bed when I got home and it was only 4.30 in the afternoon. So <sighs> this is my energy technique. I hope that it works for you. Let me know what you think of this new series. And I hope I'm even on camera. I don't even know. <laughs> um, I hope that that works for you. Now I have to go figure out what I'm going to make for dinner. And this way I'm not rushing through dinner and like putting all of that negative energy into the food I'm about to consume. This way I am making dinner that hopefully will help nourish and heal uh, me and my family. And I'm not dumping my negative energy into the food. So let me know what you think of this concept. Let me know if you've tried it. And I um, let me know what you think about this upcoming series where I will actually be doing massage techniques again. So this is thank you for watching the first episode of When I Think About You, I Touch My Crystals. <laughs>